Imagine entering an ancient old pyramid somewhere in Egypt only to be killed by the death god Anubis himself. While death is generally undesirable, being killed by a god is a pretty cool thing, we can't ignore that fact. So in this video, I will reveal the immense stupidity and complete absence of rain in our character's approach from the comfortable seat of my ergonomic gaming chair with an extremely humble sense of undeniable and king-like superiority. In this video, we will beat the pyramid in pyramid. Yeah. Now, before we begin, you should pick a character who you identify most with, so we all know at which point you would likely die if this happened to you. Yes, in case you wonder, this is an educational video. These are the characters. This is the blonde chick right here. She's the main character. If you are forward-thinking, annoying and generally confident, well then that's you. Congratulations. This is her father, or your father, well whatever. If you stick with what you know, generally think you are better and think the other people are stupid, well, then that's you. Her boyfriend is this guy right here. If you're good looking, a simp and emotionally unstable, welcome to the club. They are followed by a reporter and her cameraman. If you are disliked by most around you without realizing it's actually your fault because you think you're perfect, then that's you. The cameraman is this guy right here. If you lack confidence, are pushed around consistently by everybody around but accept that reality without a problem, hi, how you doing? So our team of archaeologists are excavating the finding of the century, a three-sided pyramid 250 miles off Cairo. Oh and by the way, this is Rashid, he's the security guy, responsible for the excavation site safety. But before they can enter, they are told to leave within 24 hours and return to the United States. Apparently there is a civil war breaking out in the capital. But of course they don't care, because they are archaeologists. You must be passionate about what you do. Therefore you don't just leave this important site behind. If you aren't willing to take risks, you would have done better sticking with collecting fossils and Pokemon or shells on a beach. So when they find the entrance of the pyramid, this is what happened. Now, I don't know about y'all, but that looked like Voldemort coming out for some fresh air. They, however, deemed it as a poisonous gas released by a fungus. Now, you know, honestly, I don't really care what it was, right? It's obviously unhealthy to be near that thing, so back up and leave. It's simple. But what they do next is the following. They own Wall-E, yes, the Pixar thing, a small tech gadget worth hundreds of thousands of USD. It's a perfect gadget for this exploration mission. So when they move it in, it doesn't take long until it gets ripped apart, causing our characters to lose all contact. Well, what could have done something like this? Well, let's analyze and then move on to the how to beats. This pyramid was excavated during the past few weeks of your presence. It was covered by several meters of sand. The only entrance was the one you forcefully broke through a few hours ago. <laughs> so whatever it is that's inside this pyramid and broke your gadget, it can't be anything normal. Unless you consider that there is another way in. Meaning, if this happened to you, you must consider the following. Perhaps there is another entrance or you let a stray animal enter this highly sacred and important cultural heritage, in which case you suck at what you do and you should pack and leave anyways. Or you sealed the entrance after opening it, which you should have done, in which case nothing could have entered without being noticed. So what do you do? Exactly, you enter this age-old, extremely unstable pyramid without the supervision of anyone but your own amateurish team. But you're not stupid. You would never enter without appropriate safety measures, right? That's why you utilize this tiny shit piece of wire right here. Genius. Now it goes without saying that one wire attached to one fixture outside is extremely risky. It would have been easy to fixate a couple additional wires just in case. I mean, why not, right? Also, instead of five people going in to retrieve a destroyed robo thing, it doesn't seem all that smart to me. Leave someone behind. Seriously, if you don't make it out for whatever reason, you have back up outside and you will be safe no matter what. To beat the threat of getting lost inside this pyramid, you should do the following. When you enter this pyramid, leave a trace back. You can't rely on the wires only. They are a great idea, but leaving physical totems back as you walk deeper into the pyramid would have been a much safer option. Additionally, set up roles before you enter. That's my beat number three. Who leads, who's the rear, and what do you do in the case of a cave-in? I'm a big fan of roles, okay? If you watched my past videos, I'm all about distributing roles. 
With roles, everybody can focus on what they do best without having to concentrate on multiple things at once. This adds a layer of clarity, security and alertness while minimizing confusion and the feeling of being lost, which happens fairly easy in an unknown environment. In my opinion, even having systems in place to ensure that you don't get lost, aka the wires and breadcrumbs behind, two people of the team should solely focus on where exactly you're going. In fact, writing down arrows on a blank piece of paper indicating when you make a turn is the simplest and most secure way to ensure your orientation. Oh. Michael, what's wrong? So they finally find what they came for, a completely wrecked wall E. Of course, but that stuff happens when you are an adventurer. For a 100k worth piece of tech, it seems more like something you would buy on Alibaba, let's be honest. Looking at that wrecked piece of tech, it doesn't look like a dog trashed it. Of course not. We knew that to begin with. But if you really needed to come back and check for yourself, this completely f***ed gadget should be a red flag. I mean, it looks like a victim of a freaking crocodile attack. Let's be honest here, people entering this pyramid without the support of either Indiana Jones, Lara Croft or Nathan Drake is just painful to watch. Your wire. What? Oh. Must have snapped. In the following scenes, the pathetic little wire snapped. Not that we expected that, huh? We lost completely our orientation and the reporter has nothing better to do than blaming the cameraman. If I were in that team, she would have been the first one to be exiled. Now the curious thing here is, they argue which way to go, eventually settle with the blonde chick's opinion, take her route and almost die. Of course. The better option would have been to find the other part of the wire, which must be somewhere. So instead of walking endlessly trying to find the entrance, aka the exit, just try to find the other part of that wire and you'll be safe. But that would be too easy. So eventually our precious characters end up here. Next to finding Wall E's remaining body, the chamber is about to cave in, and I was wondering when that would finally happen. This bird view gives us the perfect angle to look at what's going on here. So, we got three people on this side, with the exit behind them, and then we got two people on the other side, the simp and the victimized cameraman. Now it doesn't really matter on which side you stand, but I suggest you never take the lead in unknown territory. That way you would never end up where those two on the left have ended up here. If the surface is about to cave in, what do you do? Exactly, you get away from the center to distribute the weight more evenly. The next thing you should do would be to leave that area one by one. Whoever is closer to the exit should go first. One plus one is two. Not three, not one and a half, not four, not 17, it's two. Our characters do the opposite. They tell those on the left to walk exactly through the center, past the three characters on the right to make it to the safe zone. That's more than stupid, because it doesn't follow any sort of conceivable rationale. If you follow what I've mentioned just before, you should be on the safer side, no question. And if you are a special kind of intelligent person, then this is for you. Then you probably have noticed this giant massive protrusion around the walls, duh. So our character fell through and as luck or bad luck would have it, everyone survived, including you of course. But it doesn't take long and a massive boulder crushes the sim's leg and takes him out. If this was you, sorry to break it to you but it's over. Claim your reward in the comment section. What? It goes without saying that if you are lost and are unable to proceed independently, you have almost zero chance to survive. If your team doesn't consist of at least two above average strong people, leaving you back is the single best option concerning the group. That's another reason why sticking with people is generally great, but hold your distance if they seem to be stupid. Quick side note, when the four characters proceed and open up the entrance to the part next by, they take away those big wooden bars obstructing the passage. With those bars, it would have been probably easy to leverage that boulder off of Simpman's leg. He could have been saved, is what I'm talking about. But for that, you would have needed to carry him over, and that would have been probably a little bit uh, annoying or so, I guess. But come to think of it, it would have been probably a good idea to carry him over, so if you were attacked by a monster at some point, you could just throw him away as a decoy and just go for a run. So, survival of the fittest, right? When they finally proceed, this happens. Two things. Savage mommy cats are no joke, 
and Arab people with AK-47s are a blessing in certain situations. Unfortunately, that doesn't last too long. Rashid, or whatever his name was, gets pulled into the tunnel and is now gone too. Perfect. There was a way to beat that event though. First of all, Rashid had a handgun on his side. While he was firing his assault rifle, somebody should have grabbed that handgun. He ran out of ammo quickly too, but looking at his outfit, he probably had backup ammunition too. If we can avoid his death here, not only could we pick up a valuable new team member, but we could also grab a firearm as well. But he died, okay? No wishful thinking here. We also don't have any idea on how Rashid got in here. That question should have been priority to answer. Now it's too late. He dropped his assault rifle though and our characters proceeded without picking that weapon up, which I think is a dumb move. Even a rifle with no loaded shots is preferable compared to bare hands, especially when you will have to fight sneaky little monster cats. Do you remember when I was talking about never walking at the front in unknown territory? Well, please enjoy. <laughs> Well, 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 watching how to beat videos is what they didn't do, that much I can tell. A couple of things here, for starters, if you are her, you are doomed, I think there is no need to explain that. How to prevent that though, don't run mindlessly ahead if you don't know what's up front, remember. Your mother told you many times not to run around the pool area, how many times did you have to slip and hit your head until you got the point? Exactly. But in this case, you slip once, and then you don't slip anymore. Secondly, I can't believe they suddenly have a rope that can carry multiple people at once. Plus, what about those emergency lights? Jesus. But the worst thing here is that when they leave, they literally leave that rope behind as well. First the gun, now the rope. Let's recap and reassess the situation first. In fact, that's something our characters should do as well. The psychological advantages of calling out your circumstances should not be underestimated. It helps a lot in building a healthy framework, which is pivotal for making it out alive. By now, three people have died, three are left, and we are still completely lost. One of the things that bothers me most is why none of these characters talk about how they need to get on a higher level again in order to make it out. If you remember at the beginning of this movie, we briefly saw the apex of the pyramid. She didn't look particularly wide or big, but considering how far and deep the characters went in, it must have been a steady way down. It is true that they broke through about 5 meters deep as well, but when we compare that extremely lengthy tunnel system to the actual size of the pyramid's tip, most corridors our characters have taken must include changings in elevation. In that case, one should pay more attention to that detail and look out specifically for ways that feel like going upwards. Another idea would be to touch the walls, floors and ceilings as much as you can. No, I'm not talking about a stone fetish here. But if you have one, that's completely fine. We at Binge, we don't judge. Pyramids aren't airtight, meaning there must be channels of constant airflow. If you can find one, you have increased your odds quite a bit. But while touching the walls constantly seems to be a little tiring and potentially demotivating, I would light up one of my emergency torches and see how the smoke behaves. The smoke should perfectly indicate where you will find an exit. Or, of course, you find another part of Wally. -E. Yes, that's the third time, Jesus. You use its still functioning antenna, wire it magically to your camera system, and send out a message. I mean, sure, you could do that. But that would be for the Elon Musks out there. For my part, I already struggle with placing those batteries into my remote. Fuck. Anyway, our three remaining characters proceed getting more lost than ever before, however that's possible. Eventually they find a secret door and manage to open it up. At this point, I'm really not sure anymore if my whole script here is complete nonsense and those three characters don't even try to find the exit. The chamber they find is the Pharaoh chamber, and it doesn't take too long until it's only two of them left. We have to keep going. We don't want to end up <laughs> Now, it's not explicitly mentioned that what killed him was Anubis himself, but according to the style in which he was killed, his heart was ripped out, we can assume that it was in fact Anubis. A later scene further backs this claim up. Here we see how he weighs the heart of his victim. Apparently, Anubis would weigh the hearts of deceased people against an ostrich feather. If the heart turned out to be heavier, the soul would be sent to hell, while heaven would await those whose hearts are lighter. Yeah, that must have been a happy era to die in, huh? Gravity was discovered 4,500 years later. Now we know why. Anyway, how do we beat a god? 
Well, that's up for debate, but before we get there, this is what happens next. The blonde chick and the cameraman run away. That's probably a smart move. But escaping Anubis in a dark and sticky underground labyrinth, housing shitty little monster cats that you can't seem to escape? I don't know man, I think a quick death is probably preferable. With a lot of luck though, both of them survive and Anubis walks out the secret chamber without taking note of them. Now, what do you do in this position? A. You quickly try to escape or B. You watch the camera footage. Of course, you, you watch the camera footage because you know, we all know we have to work ahead. I absolutely can't believe how freaking slowly those characters are. They are like my grandma buying groceries, but unlike them, she isn't chased by the freaking underworld god, for Christ's sake. That monster left that secret chamber already. What you should do is, don't speak and find an alternative exit as fast as you can. If you can't, hide and try to sneak out from where you came in once he comes back. But when they finally find the path after about 20 minutes, mind you, it's too late. Of course it's too late. What did you expect? The cam guy gets killed and the blonde chick gets captured. That could have been prevented uh, multiple times, about 97 times throughout the script here. Um, so what do you do in this scene? What do you do in this position? How do you beat the god? According to the Egyptian Book of the Dead, there are multiple spells that could assist you in this situation. If Anubis is real, the spells that groom him are just as likely to be real as well. So as a last resort, I would recite ancient hymns dedicated to Anubis. Best case is, he sets you free. And worst case, you will end up as his new bride. But if you don't know any satanic poetry by heart, no worries. According to this video, Anubis can be easily beat with the right beat. And who knows, you might end up as BFFs eternally dancing to underground tunes in the twilight of shadow and death.